pense. You are well enough to be uh, reassigned. You'll be shipped to uh, Venice. Oh, and uh, Nurse Sophia will accompany you. Venice. That sounds promising. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Congratulations, Captain Dipples. Your performance has been outstanding. Thank you, sir. In the mountains, you brought over more German deserters than anyone. Before that, in Palestine, you did brilliant work in the capture of Damascus. It is a record second to none. Are you completely recovered from your wound? I still get a little tired. Actually, I'm 100% though, really. I can't wait to start my new assignment. Your next assignment is North Africa. North Africa? Well, there's no war there. On the contrary, the Germans are doing everything they can to stir up trouble there. And if the French should lose control of North Africa, it would be calamitous. I can't believe this. There's nothing there. Why me? You speak Arabic. And frankly, Captain, someone has to go. Thank you. Any idea what Casablanca's like? That's what I figured. Yes, sir. You can go in now. Again, I am delighted they sent you, Captain. A man of your caliber is rare here. Thank you, sir. 
So my assignment? That you will learn when you reach Fort Carmes, here. At the edge of the desert. With most of our troops back in France, the situation here is delicate, even precarious. The rebel tribesmen are growing in numbers. Their audacity is increasing. And why? Because someone is supplying them with fresh arms and ammunition. Your mission is to capture some of those stolen rifles so we can see who has made them. And perhaps find a serial number so we can trace their origin. Tomorrow at dawn, you will lead a patrol to Fort Carmis. No one must know that you are in French intelligence. When you know it. And your new identity is Captain Duval of the Foreign Legion. I have here your papers. But you must be careful. The enemy here is everywhere. Congratulations. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Sergeant Heinkel, ready for your orders, sir? You're German. So are the rest of the patrol, apart from a couple of Poles and the Lithuanian. This is the Legion, mein Kapitän. All the nationalities of Europe. I suppose we better get started. Mount up! Let me your water bottle, Sergeant. My water bottle? Oh, no, sir. You don't want it. What? I mean, you don't need it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Cut the crap, Hank. I'll hand it over. That's an order, Sergeant. <sighs> what is this? Schnapps, sir. What? Schnapps. 100% proof. This is lethal. <laughs> I knew you wouldn't like it. Oh. Davis, he'll have these men. Are they friendly? Does that answer your question, sir? No, no! Get into the 
is an accent. Marco isn't so boring after all. Nothing to say. You take my country by force. You exploit my people. You degrade my religion. And you have nothing to say. Let us try to torture of a thousand cuts, Haji. They are not worthy of so noble a death. Take them out and shoot them. Wait a minute. So. You have something to say after all. No. I just thought before we die. Last cigarette? <laughs> you French are so romantic. Give them a cigarette. Here, take it. It's a bit dry. German communicate to the Bedouin. You did well to get through, Duval. Very well. Did they tell you we've been under attack here for the past 10 months? No, no one's told me a thing. Least of all about my assignment. Your assignment, yes. Sante. Sante. Rather than stealing German communique, you would have been better off if you'd gotten a rifle so we could discover who is supplying them with fresh arms and ammunition. Don't you mean the Germans? No. Not in this case. It could be anyone, anyone at all. Free traders, Egyptians, Italians. We are lost unless we can find the source of these guns. Colonel, it looks like he's already done it. These were in the saddlebags of the horse Captain Duvel was riding. Look, sir. Serial numbers, rifle, ammunition, it's all there. Captain, you've surpassed yourself. Only uh, five minutes and you've already accomplished your mission. The arms, Captain Duval, are French. French? 
yes, imagine our very latest type of rifle, more deadly, more accurate than anything we'd known before. You must report back to HQ. There they will compare these numbers with the records they have at headquarters. And then we shall be able to identify the source. I suggest you leave as soon as it's dark. Dismissed. They told me you were exceptional. They did not exaggerate. But you have exceeded your reputation. Thank you, sir. He will have to be extraordinary if this is true. These serial numbers are from arms delivered to Sheikh Kamal. Sheikh Kamal? But he's one of the most loyal of all the council. <laughs> if loyalty can be measured in the amount of gold we paid him, but uh, can it? Well, if Kamal is a traitor, gentlemen, our position here is serious. I regret, General, that it may be even more serious than you imagine. May I remind you that our arms in Hydran are guarded by a detachment of the Legion, which raises a disturbing possibility. That a Legionnaire is the traitor? No, impossible. In war, as in love, nothing is impossible. I would it were otherwise. Who is in command at Edrin? Colonel Bonnet. Oh, Colonel Bonnet is a man of honor. I would trust him with my life. It would appear that we must send this young man to Edrin immediately. But how is he to get there without arousing suspicion? No, true. The slightest hint, my dear fellow, and your life won't be worth a fig. What about that American woman? She is touring there with a legionnaire as escort. Excellent. American woman. A distinguished American writer is at present visiting North Africa. In Paris, she has done important work, founding hospitals for the wounded, raising money for widows and orphans. The President of the Republic recently decorated her with a Legion of Honor. Her name is Mrs. Edith Wharton. And the novelist. Well, you know her. I know of her, yes, sir. Is she due to visit Hadra? No, but it can be arranged. Uh, Captain Duval, you are appointed liaison officer to Mrs. Wharton. You will travel with her to Hadra. There you will uncover the traitor who has been selling arms to the Berbers, and you will take appropriate measures. Good luck. Sir. Miss Warden. Henry Duvall. You're American, surely. In New Jersey. It's a pleasure to meet you, ma'am. How delightful. Happy to know you, Captain Duvall. Just step here. Thank you. Okay. Oh, no. I hate to ride by myself. Come on, sit with me, please. There. That's so much nicer. Is. My name is Henry Jones. I just named myself Indiana after my dog, so my friends call me Indy. <laughs> then so shall I. Indy, I like it. And you must call me Edith. All right. Edith. Tell me, Indy, how do you come to join the French Foreign Legion? That's quite a story. With a girl at the beginning of it, I hope. Something like that. You don't want to talk about it? No, I don't mind. I just hate to bore you. <laughs> bore me? With the tale of unrequited passion? It was unrequited, wasn't it? <laughs> Begin. I'm all ears. Well, it was in Princeton. I was still in high school. And spring break was coming up, and there was this girl. Her name was Nancy. Nancy and I were... Were and then I asked Vicky to marry me, only she wouldn't. She wants to be a writer. She just didn't want to give up her independence. So that's when I joined the Belgian army and I just left London. When 
know. I guess it's always like that. Like what? Well, like, like it starts out okay, and then everything seems to get messed up. Not too long ago, there was this girl in Italy, and I loved her. I really did. So did this pal of mine. We fought over like cats and dogs. We were both crazy about her. And she went and married some other guy. What makes people fall in love? And why do they always fall in love with the wrong people? I don't know. All I do know is there's no controlling it. One falls in love. One feels pain. One also causes it. And then other people are hurt. Don't look sad. Sometimes love can be wonderful. And with the last person you'd ever dream of. Well, that's true. In Paris, I had... I had an experience. Do you mean sex? Yeah. I'm sorry. I've been talking for hours. I've never done that with anyone before. I enjoyed it. Because you're a writer? No, because I like you. Now, may I have some more tea? You cold? Maybe a little. God, it's beautiful. Yes, it is. The oldest Casbah's in Morocco. It was built around the same time as Versailles. Those sunken gardens, mosques, baths. There was nothing like it in the whole of North Africa. How do you know all this? Well, I've always been interested in archaeology. When the war's over, I'm going to become an archaeologist. You'll make a fine one. You think so? I do. You have passion. This is so great. You're really sweet, you know that? Thank you. I like you too. You okay? Thank you. Lowell Thomas, U.S. Government Information Service. How do you do? Oh, terrific, thanks. <laughs> they told me I'd find you here. They? General Lottie's guys at HQ. Boy, do we hightail to catch up with you. I'm not sure I understand. Well, I'm writing for American newspapers, and uh, you're on your way to Hadron, right? Well, the idea is that I go along with you. You go with us. Right. Hi, good to know you. Captain Duvall, French Foreign Legion. Can I see your papers, please? Sure. Famous American author in Darkest Africa. Could be a terrific story. I am not here to promote myself, Mr. Thomas. No, sure, but it's great human interest. Folks back home could really go for it. And I'll show how much we're doing to win this war. 
Uh, Mrs. Wharton, look. I won't be in the way. Anything I write, I'll let you see it. If you don't like it, it's spiked. That's a promise, okay? Very well. Oh, great. You won't regret it. You won't even know I'm here. Fact is, Captain, the war in Europe's a stalemate. That's why I went where the action is, Arabia. I was in Arabia earlier this year. You were? Say, did you ever run across a crazy Britisher called T.E. Lawrence? Ned Lawrence? Sure. Known him since I was 10 years old. You don't say. Maybe you could fill me in on his background, a few personal details, stuff like that. I was just telling Captain Duval about this British officer in Arabia. Turns out he already knows him. Anything, doesn't matter how small. I don't think so. His name's T.E. Lawrence, and he's leading the Bedouin in a guerrilla war against the Turks, wailing the tar out of them. I don't think I've heard of him. Oh, you will. By the time I'm through, the whole world will have heard of him. He'll hate that. Are you kidding? He'll love it. Believe me, pal, I know. So will the public. He's a hero, and the public needs heroes. All it takes is a little help. Is that your job, Mr. Thomas? To provide the public with heroes? Or villains, partly yes. What's wrong with that? People aren't interested in ideas. It's, it's personalities they get excited about. So you do your best to excite them? Sure. Don't get me wrong, Mrs. Wharton. Uh, I don't tell lies. I wasn't suggesting that you did. But how far would you go in writing about, what did you call it, the personal details? As far as it takes, I guess. How far is that, into their homes? Maybe. Their bedrooms? Maybe. That's what you do, after all. What I do? Sure. <laughs> I've read your books, Mrs. Wharton. I admire them. You show up social hypocrisy. You get underneath the facade. You write about men and women in their most intimate of moments, and you don't stop when the bedroom door closes. Where's the difference? The difference, Mr. Thomas, is between literature and journalism. One is fiction. And one is invading a real person's private life and exploiting it. Well, I guess you're partly right. Only partly? Yes, because I believe, I truly believe that the public has a right to know. And I believe, as truly as you, that there are some things which are private. And unless we are barbarians, they must remain private. Colonel Bonnet at your service, Mrs. Walter. Delighted to meet you, Colonel Bonnet. May I introduce my officers, Capitaine Morel, Lieutenant Cordier, and Lieutenant Villard. This is Captain Duval and Mr. Lowell Thomas. Monsieur. His Excellency, Sheikh Hamal, is ready to receive you. Sir. Madame. Mrs. Edith, your presence honors my poor house. The honor is mine, Your Excellency. Sir, may I present Captain Duval and Mr. Thomas? Please. Your journey, it was uh, beautiful. Everything in North Africa is beautiful, sir. But nothing is more beautiful than Hadrian. That is true. I see that you are most intelligent for a woman. Thank you, sir. I see that you are most courteous for a man. <laughs> I look forward to your company at dinner. In the meantime, 
is my is captain of my bodyguard. He will show all things to you. <laughs> what is that building? The armory. Would you care to see it? It's getting late, sir. Shall we? Why not? Echo. A very latest type. Most impressive. Who has access to this place? Only my officers and the Sheikh's personal bodyguard. Yeah. No one else? No one. The armory is top security. It's a fine weapon. Sir, you mustn't keep Sheikh Kamal waiting. C'est vrai. And I am sure Mrs. Wotan would like to rest before dinner. Shall we? to be delivered to you personally. Do you have to sign for those? Sign? I have never signed before. It's General Yodi's order, sir. Very well. I do. Thank you, sir. Shock you, Mrs. Edith? Shock me? Why should it shock me? It is the custom of your country. We have our customs too. Our dancing may seem more formal, but it can be equally erotic. Don't you agree, Captain Duval? I guess it depends who you're dancing with. The only shocking thing about custom is if one becomes its prisoner. Explain, please. I mean when manners, rules, conventions become too strong to break. It can lead to real unhappiness. For example, falling in love. I, 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 I don't understand. <laughs> Suppose you love someone, someone outside the normal rules. Suppose you lack the courage to act on it and to do what your heart tells you is right. Wouldn't that lead to unhappiness? Such a thing can never happen in my country. No, I'm afraid it often does in mine. I should... <coughs> Food is not your taste. It's delicious. The truth of the matter is I'm just feeling a bit dizzy. If you'll excuse me. Too much dancing, no? <laughs> <laughs> Open up. Sorry, sir. No one's allowed inside. Admit Capitaine Duval to the armory at all times, Colonel Bonnet. Sir.
I fast only in the daytime. I trust you are better, Captain. Much better. Thank you, sir. You just missed a delightful story. <laughs> Thank you, Your Excellency. An unforgettable experience. Tomorrow, I give a luncheon for you to meet some of my people. I bid you good night, Mrs. Edith. Good night, sir. at night. Every other Monday. Thank you. Excuse me, what? Colonel, I need to speak to you on the council. I have a message. No? Capitaine, this is hardly the moment. It's important, sir. D'accord? The library in ten minutes. Secret mission? You are a spy? Yes, sir. I assume you have some proof of this. My orders signed by General Yachty. Weapons are being stolen from the armory here in Hydran, taken to the rebel tribesmen by Haroon. But Haroon shall be arrested. No, sir. Not yet. He's not the real traitor. The real traitor is someone who has official access to the armory. Can you prove it? I think so. Have your officers meet me there immediately. You dare to suggest that an officer of the Legion would deceive? Bring your bodyguards. But my bodyguards are loyal. Each one of them would die for me. I'm sorry, sir. We don't have much time. Fathom. He drops the rifles down, he replaces the tiles, and he puts the empty boxes at the bottom of the stacks. Then he goes to the storehouse. He crawls through the tunnel, he takes the rifles, and he puts them in the boxes inside the storehouse. During the night, Haroon's men load them onto camels and take them to the rebels. Incredible. No, sir. It's a fact. And here's another fact. Haroon's caravan is due tonight, which means another consignment has just been transferred. But that still doesn't tell us who the traitor is. Maybe it does. When I got out of the tunnel, I was covered in sand. Of course you were. Look. Yes, sir, but you'll notice that this sand is white. Further down the tunnel, the sand is red, a very distinctive red. Now, my guess is the traitor will still have some of this on him. There is no red sand on them. True. But what about in their boots? Have your men take off their boots. Never. This is an insult. Please, Your Excellency, Captain Duval is right. Hey, it's a better. Get up! Congratulations, Captain. Brilliant work. Sorry, it's not over yet. Not over. But you have found the traitor. I found one traitor. I figured it would take more than one man to shift this amount of rifles in the time allowed. 
You three, take off your boots. I protest! If you are wrong, I shall have your head for this. I'll take that chance. Do as he says. That is an order. seen inside your boots yet. Why, you insolent puppy? No one leaves here until we do. She returned to Paris and you to the war. Shall we see each other soon, do you think? I don't know. Probably not. But after, when the war is over, will you visit me? I want to. Edith. No, please, my dear, don't. You're right, of course. Time doesn't stop. I never before realized what a cruel enemy it is. First time in my life, I really envy my father. If I had a daughter, I'd envy her, too.
goodbye, Mr. Thomas. I am happy to have known you. It's been a privilege, and uh, I'd like you to know, Mrs. Wharton, that I won't be writing a word about your visit. Why, Mr. Thomas, it never occurred to me that you would. Thank you.